And here we are. Hello, we everybody. Are. To Greetings. the thirteenth episode of our in session. And lucky thirteen. Lucky thirteen. We do have the most people on screen ever. I had to figure out a layout to fit six people <laughs> on screen. So here we go. Um, and we have today. We have with us. Simone and Luca, welcome. Hi. Um, Hi. It, this was a really That's... nice project that you sent us, and you. Um, I have to make the, uh, um, or maybe we can make this. Is it called an admission? I have to admit. We have to admit that um, we don't get many projects, so we were very happy to get your project. Thank and, you. Um, <laughs> uh, get we you celebrate. right on the show. We celebrated for three days straight. We stopped doing all work at Derivative. We stopped all development. We stopped everything, and we just had a celebration. So, this there we, you know, we highly, yeah. we highly recommend you send us your projects. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> Derivative is having celebrations when that happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but um, in all honesty, yeah, thank you very much for sending it in and welcome on the show um, to. Uh, Help with questions and things. We have Michelle Didier again and Jared Smith again. So, um, yeah, I guess that's as much for introductions that I can think of. Hmm. Um, yeah. So, uh, Simone, you are you are joining us from Berlin, and Luca, you are joining us from Venice. Yeah. Yeah. How did you guys How did you guys meet? Uh, we are friends since like uh, a lot of time. We know each other, I don't know, since about at least 10 years, maybe. And uh, um, yeah, so that's why also the project grow fast because we find that we are good friends and we find something to spend time together. So we were happy. And this is why our project uh, was uh, born and grow yeah. a little fast. Um, because you both met touch designer differently because you yes. you, you you first uh, Simone you were first an audio engineer and then uh, and then and then you you were looking for a tool to do sort of audio visuals with is that is that the process uh, yes uh, so I I did like uh, an academy uh, a, a private academy in Italy and I become a sound, sound engineer actually I studied also acoustic and uh, how to treat a studio um, and then uh, I was always like uh, into the um, surround things and I wanted to do it without using uh, without using the software that I was using and uh, at the time uh, I was using Pro Tools and uh, Ableton, um, so I want I wanted to make something like um, kind of programming things, and I asked around for uh, a tools for it. Um, a, a good friend of mine introduced me to Touch Designer, and he just told me download it. You will you will like it. And actually, it was like this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And and Luca, you uh, you work at the at the Venice Biennale, is that is that correct? That's a pretty yeah, nice yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, I work as a technician for the festivals of theater, dance and music. Mm -hmm. But uh, I started work uh, when uh, my child born because uh, I didn't want it to stay away all the summers for the festivals around the Europe and the world. So I came back to the theater. But uh, my life is uh, a VJ life. I'm a video mapper, uh, co-founder of the Delta Process uh, Collective, and another studio here in Venice where uh, we make uh, facilities, uh, technical facilities for artists that, that come here and need help to set up things. Nice. And uh, uh, so, how to explain? We started but, but, this project uh, what, one year what? ago. Yeah. Okay. No, no, ask me, ask me. Oh, no, no, I wanted, I wanted to talk about the person who uh, you, were, you were having trouble with Touch Designer and and who was it again that, that helped you in Venice? Ah, Andrew Quinn. Andrew yeah. Quinn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a super guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he, I think he's taught so many people Touch Designer. It's, uh, in fact, he's probably one of the very first Touch Designer teachers in the entire universe. 
<laughs> so, sorry I interrupted. You can, you can, you can tell us. Uh, please tell yeah, us what yeah. you were going to. Yeah, he's a master. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't uh, frequent uh, his workshops here in Venice. Uh, I don't hear you anymore. Ah, oh, I okay. think Isabel muted. It was, yeah. was a threshold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so. So, um, I was preparing a show for the Biennale Musica last year, and it uh, was really a few days I, wa I was programming with Touch Designer. And I asked him uh, some uh, really little things that uh, he explained really well, and fantastic uh, touch designer became easy for the first time. So I've decided to prepare the show entirely with this software. And, but I needed help, obviously, is because I was really a child with it. So I started to call Simone every day because I knew that uh, he became a master in it. And so we started to develop the first version of this uh, big patch that now is at the version 3, I think. Uh, the idea for this patch uh, was to put together uh, all the projects that uh, I was developing with Touch Designer, all the tutorials I was following and my ideas in the nights. And, but I didn't know how to put them all together and make them work because uh, some of them were really heavy, so it was not possible to put a three or four together and the computer was crashing. So we discovered, thanks to Andrew, the stop cooking. <laughs> and after that, we decided to make uh, something like uh, a big project mixer. Then uh, we started to implement it with uh, all the um, protocols of communication because uh, just for the first show uh, I was working with a light designer so we decided to connect uh, the light console with the computer with ArtNet and OSC and uh, then the MIDI controller, then the audio reactive things. And uh, so we started to invent a way to put all these things together and work with all the projects at, at the same time, blending them and uh, stop cooking them uh, when the new project was uploaded. And yeah, it's the video that uh, you can see in the bottom there. And oh, that's actually a new project already done with the with Dragon from the video. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Is it? It is the first version. <laughs> hmm. And is the, uh, if I just, um, I think you mentioned that before, but you went from um, starting the project to actually using it. That was a very short time frame, right? That was yeah, yeah. <laughs> A bit more than a week. <laughs> I was nice. astonished. At, uh, I was astonished about the work of Luca because I mean, a guy that uh, meet uh, a software and want to do a show like this, uh, say, "Are you crazy?" No, no, we are not crazy. Come here, tell me how how uh, how I do things. So, yeah, so yeah, it was it really, kind really, of um, kind of fits the uh, definition of crazy, but um, yeah, in a good yeah. way. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think if we took a poll, we'd find that most people operate like that in our community. Jump into yeah. the fire. Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah. Well, I was really in the perfect moment, I mean, because uh, I met Andrew and started to talk with Simona quite every day. So my learning process went really fast. And then thanks also to the big community that every question uh, is fast answer and a lot of YouTube things, so yeah. it was really quite easy. I, I don't know how to explain, nothing is easy, but it was funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and having a whole year of being stuck at home didn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come see, comes out, but... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for so the video down there, the first half an hour is another concert. That is doesn't that matter. Oh, it's another one. Okay. Uh, no, no, it's the, it's the right video. Yeah, but we started. Yeah. yeah. Like here. This is part uh, also. This is uh, the second project you've done with it? Or? Yeah, th yeah. This is the second version of the Dragon. And uh, later, if you want, I can show you really fast uh, all of them. And. Uh, 
for this project, it was a bit more complicated because uh, a friend of mine, uh, Enrico Wilch, which uh, I work with him uh, a lot, uh, ended to develop uh, his really life project uh, for uh, generating sounds in real time and like a big granulator. So we decided to put these two projects together and make them full reactive. So the audio was controlling the videos and the videos was controlling the, the sounds. And uh, we spent a couple of months working on it. And, and then we make this live concert together. Nice. Uh, but the, the patch that we decided to call it Dragon because it's everything drag and drop. Uh, things that I really hate when I'm in live set is to get concentrated on reading small things and find the things uh, on the desktop. So uh, with Simone, we thought that uh, a nice way was to take everything from everywhere and, and just drag in the right position. Uh, all all the, the signals from the audio, the MIDI, the OSC, OSC to the, all the published controls of the little projects inside the main patch. And also the, the videos that could be dragged from the generator into the effects that went into a layer mixer that went now in the, the final project into a timeline that uh, at the end can be mapped on uh, all the projectors output of the computer. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, really fast and, and drag and drop for every controls. So we decided to call it the dragon. dragon. And, uh, the, um, yeah. yeah. Not to be confused with a dragon that blows smoke. Right. <laughs> drag on, drag on. Drag Maybe on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a comparison with the power of the software we want to make and uh, give to everybody. Uh, it, it's a good comparison. You can drag dragons. You see what you yeah. You use this, oh. um, I just wanted to also, I think we hadn't uh, asked you that yet. The uh, You're working for, like you're a tech the, in a, in a kind Reed. of a, the REIT, which is a kind of a social club thing. Uh, okay, yeah, there's a lot of brand in, involved. So I, would, I can just say that it's a really beautiful place. And uh, yeah, I don't want to make... Uh, yeah, no, so we skip the, the part of what is the place. I can just say that is uh, we make dinner, lunch, and uh, before was a um, gym, and the tech there is amazing, and the right guy in the right place. I'm here alone dealing with LED wall, light, uh, and audio for the small concert. Uh, and uh, because the guy didn't want to spend so much money, I need to arrange uh, a patch also to make everything run from one server. And yeah, so oh, yeah, now it's working. Yes. <laughs> so you're you're driving, um, yeah, you're developing uh, little applications or also something like Dragon can be used in the venue to drive yes, this course, big media of walls, course. right? Design, it's a super powerful tool with that also for permanent uh, installation. Right? Those are some some visual for a um, private event from Vice, uh, I don't know, like um, influencer, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, was making visual, uh, guys was uh, rapping after. And um, I actually, the I actually think that touch designer also for uh, static uh, in, in the installation with with a tablet uh, is the perfect tool. And we are managing light, and I'm not doing the the light things. Uh, we have a, I have a noise for each day, kind of. So every day you open the patch, it's a new noise, uh, and every week you have a new noise, uh, <laughs> and they are happy with the light. <laughs> It's really nice. beautiful work, though. Like all, uh, both of you. It's really nice. So, who's going to show us something first? Right. Yeah. 
Oh, um, there's two of you. <laughs> we, we have a meta moment <laughs> here. <laughs> Explain the functionality of Dragon, and actually we can see now, like, in uh, all the, we, we can say old version, because as soon as I got your uh, invitation, we start, like, say, oi, they reply, for real, man, for real. <laughs> <laughs> so we start say, okay, we, we need to do things, okay, this, that, that, huh? and yeah, I can share my screen now. Yes, please. Um, that was Arrow, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You okay. See, you should see me wanting to connect. Ah, yes, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I was already inside of that designer. Again, oh. please accept. There we go. Oops. <clears throat> okay. Okay. You've got the. Uh... Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So here we are. This is the dragon number three, and I will start uh, explaining you from the left. The those are the input value. Okay. So if you actually want to see the input value, uh, we go here, and uh, we have all the value. All the value are going in the in the Python storage. And this is why you can make this kind of magic. He's dragging any kind of value. And this is OSC2, link it to a value. And he's mapping the value in the patch. He's uh, actually telling you from anything which one is it. So this is Artnet 10, for example, or uh, OSC 11. Okay. Each control. Uh, as a range and uh, uh, lag, uh, a lag to smooth out the value that is incoming. In, in and then uh, you have uh, other value that goes uh, in the patch that now is a light uh, pattern top. And you can move things and do stuff with this one, okay? You, uh, now there's a lot of bug around, so theoretically you should push and uh, make slave the, those value. I don't know. Yes, it's working now. We're lucky. And yeah, so you have two modules in each uh, parameter that is a manual. Okay. And slave. Let's see. Okay. Then we go here. In the middle, uh, you have the generator part. So we have a terrain, for example. And also this one has his own things that are moving now. The preview is fully interactive because we thought that is a good way to put control also there. Okay. Uh, you can change patch. Okay. Uh, this is a shader actually that is moved with an art wall. And you can access each patch easily by holding the mouse upon what you want to see. Press F9 and you go where you want. Okay, so yeah, now we are, now this is you, and yeah, here we are. Um, okay, then you, what you will do with all those stuff? You can go in the compositor. The compositor, uh, it's a drag and drop solution to composite things. You have 16 of those, and each one has uh, three different layer of composition. So now we have this one that goes in over, this one will be extruded, and the water is cool, and you make this. Then you want to compose a timeline with all the stuff you have. So you take the things and you make your timeline. That actually is output, outputted on our right. Okay, the timeline has some control, like uh, you have a loop that you can move around. Okay, you can slow it down, make it go faster. Um, Tell how many seconds has to be long. Okay, just one uh, and, one second. Uh, I, yes. I did I did forget to ask you to turn on mouse trails um, so that everybody can see your mouse uh, because your uh -huh. mouse is hidden by by default. Is that, okay. uh, where, is that uh, where should I go to activate it? You basically go into settings in Windows settings. Mm -hmm. And mouse settings. Yes. And there should be, oh, that's not readable for me. There should be a, like a little Windows dialog for. Um, How do you say mouse in Italian? 
Oh, there's mouse. There's uh, mouse. mouse. Uh, mouse Modifica three. la velocita. No, that's velocity. <laughs> mm. Mouse, mouse. Oh, here are fit. Mouse settings. There it is. No, that's speed. Yeah. Speed. It should be like the old Windows dialog for mouse settings. Anybody in the chat know? Dimens uh, it's an additional, additional mouse options under related settings in the mouse area. Oh, yeah, mouse properties. If you search for mouse properties, then it might come up. Mm -hmm. And then it's under pointer, or no, wait. Pointer, op pointer options, yeah. Oh, yeah, there. And then, yeah, oh, yes. And then go to pointer okay. options to the third one. And then visualize la trace. And turn it on to minimum because otherwise you get yes. There we go. Thank you. Yes. Applause. <laughs> okay. Should I actually do something again, or I should I go? No, I think you can just uh, continue. Okay. Right. Uh, so uh, we were doing something with the uh, compositor. Okay. And uh, with the compositor, you can build uh, the mm, timeline that then will be outputted. Uh, here, uh, we, on the right side, we have some other buttons that uh, are the FX manager, okay? And uh, you can, each, uh, each effect has uh, five input that are also drag and drop, and they're telling what is what. So now we are going to this guy. So if this guy is without input, uh, then it's said okay if we put something inside then he's making something and you can control see guys making this should make something okay yeah you see you can do stuff um here i'm asking help to actually have a log that show the all those, all those control when you have it, uh, maybe you're doing a show, it, it will be good to actually see what, what is doing what and what is connected to. Uh, I'm actually doing a solution with the FIFO that is auto printing everything and compose a table with all the FIFO, that, with all the FIFO that are giving me the info I need, but uh, I sometimes it's not uh, working as uh, supposed. Uh, this is a really cool thing that you can make. Uh, in the audio analyzer guy that now is not in the Python storage, so you can use it only here because th those are real uh, touch designers. So, yeah, this can, you can do like this, uh, but not here. Yeah, uh, yeah, Luca Simone, crazy guy, Python from Lagoon of Venice. <laughs> <laughs> Then yeah, uh, other function uh, we would like to have. Uh, this is actually the audio audio things, uh, and uh, so you can make even stuff uh, sound reactive if it's needed. Uh, then this is the output guy. So I guess you can make like this. No, but you can make like that. Uh, yeah, you see, so you can decide which output goes in which screen you have connected to your computer. Uh, here are missing something that was in the previous version. So all noise and the LFO. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then you can have animation uh, internally based, not uh, external based that come from here. Here is actually, I don't know. Okay. This one is the out of the, um, of the signals. So for example, if you want to map a MIDI to a light, you drag from here and you drop in there. It will be implemented soon. Hope with the help of the community. I the project is free, remain free with it for everybody. This is the good things. Uh, I would like to have here um, uh, a setting page where you set actually the resolution of the project, uh, how many uh, projectors you need, and uh, all those kind of stuff like setting things. We are stuck with a lot of stuff uh, and we would like to have like uh, someone that really can join us and help because uh, at this point, I mean, the project is free. I think it's cool. And uh, if someone want to help us, the mail is here in the spam button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this is Dragon, a, TD, a free TD solution for show management. We are looking for developer to bring it to the next level. 
and I will reply to your mail here. <laughs> uh, ah, last but not least, uh, the last version of RCP is really good. <laughs> Love. Maybe it works so well. That's good. Ah, okay. yeah. you, you did it, yes. Well, yes. Uh, the RCP comes from um, Ingo, uh, you know, his last name escapes me, but uh, he, we just implemented his um, the protocol. But I'm happy to see because you've got a whole lot of sliders yeah, in there. The, okay, we were talking about values, patches and things. So, yeah, all the stuff you see here, everything goes automatically RCP. And uh, you can say this one I made it because I think that uh, having a centralized solution for a show, okay, if you can build a, a computer from your own, is the best uh, solution. So after, if you, are, you, you cannot manage the show alone, so you will work with someone, you can give a remote control to the server to someone. So you, uh, you don't need to click the actual computer because you can give a tablet to this guy. This guy goes and make the light as he likes. Meanwhile, you work with the Dragon to the actual show. And someone else with the audio can even do other stuff in RCP because I guess it's simultaneously and multi multi connection. I hope so. It is, yeah. 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 So yeah, you you, nice. you you can say one from eight is my video things, and then uh, here is your light stuff, and here you have the audio guy. Yeah. Two device, one computer, one you show everything centralized, low budget. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, you can open window. Yes. Right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Good. Nice. Well, um, uh, nice. Nice. fractalization of patches. Uh, oh, like sorry. This. I, I took you off the screen there, but there you're back. Yeah. Last two minutes. This is how, if someone will download the patch, I will make just a little introduction. Everything is uh, not well named. But at least the big things are named. So here you have the audio that is actually not working. Uh, here you have the timeline. The timeline is uh, based on uh, uh, the multi-mix. I love this thing. This is for pure love. Hmm. Uh, then you have the main brain with all the patches and the fix manager. Uh, RCP and uh, here is the video compositor. So after when we update, uh, when we will update stuff, maybe we will just post this piece, this piece new. Then you can just take it and remove it and take new stuff and work. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I guess we would um, maybe because you sent along a couple of questions uh, that you. Um, you were looking into and uh, looking at those questions, we thought um, we can possibly answer some of it indirectly. Um, we like to answer things indirectly. <laughs> so that there is, um, it's kind of like a, uh, we can basically show how we would approach certain things. And I think Jared is going to start with um, showing some uh, some of these ideas. So I'm going to connect to you. Okay. Am I connected? So it's waiting to connect. Oh, I probably have to accept it, right? Yeah. Right. Simone? <clears throat> Did yes. you do mo did you do most of this development with a non commercial license? Yes, I did. Okay, I want to I want to I think that's worth pointing out. That's uh, an incredible uh, incredible uh, development product well, development. No, there's that. nothing. I mean, and I also sometimes switch it from a version to another, and uh, actually work it always. Okay. Ah no no, just to be honest, sometimes pass it through. The because at, at work we of course have the, the two commercial one or maybe three. Uh, so uh, sometimes it was passed there and uh, but I don't know if this mattered. Uh, That's great. Just anyway, <laughs> good work. And work. Okay. 
Um, can we see my screen? Yep. OK, so um, the questions I'm going to try to tackle first here um, that you guys asked were, uh, how can we build a real-time timeline? Not going to do it. Um, it's, too, <laughs> it's too much. Too, it's way too I deep. Tried, I tried. <laughs> uh, many tried but, before you, Jared, and many yeah, failed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You already ha you already have one I can see, so good for you. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of thing you have to do these days, unfortunately. Um, everyone's kind of building their own. Um, that's going to be the case for probably a, a long while. So um, that's why I'm so also just pointing out time base uh, that might be also a source of inspiration. Um, I just put that on. It's in the community. You can find it there. Yeah, there's there's time base. Uh, there's also. Uh, I put a link in the uh, chat. Well, I'm just going to show. I'm not going to show the video. I'm just going to show the links. Um, so you, if you're watching the videos, just quickly, maybe just take note of the string that you see here, which is tutorial on Lister drag and drop three. So this guy seems to have a, um, um, what's his name? Tim, Tim Franklin has uh, something that looks pretty, pretty clean and basic. And he's also um, dealing with or working with a Lister already, which when I look inside of your guys' files, I don't see you guys using the Lister component very much. So that's kind of what I'm going to cover today. And that'll, I hope, with some uh, more information about your second question, uh, which was uh, how to kind of work with extensions and what you wanted maybe an introduction to, to extensions. So uh, we kind of, both Marcus and I are kind of wrapping our um, examples up into an, uh, building extensions. Um, or using extensions to build um, a system. So you'll get a kind of a preview of more structure about how to set up a component right from the start, how to start thinking about building a component from the start, where to put your code, where to put your callbacks. And in my in my example I'm going to show right now, it's um, how to build a lister. Um, and uh, so there's that. There's also, um, it looks like you guys are doing a lot of drag and drop already. It's in the name of your software, but I'll just point out for others. Another important video for now is probably the drag and drop scripts and touch designer by yeah. by uh, Albers. Um, and then the most important thing for those who are watching this introduction to the Lister is um, this amazing article, three part article by. Uh, Matthew Regan and, and Ivan. Ivan, who built the Lister component, um, this is very depth. So, so once you get, if you watch this video, the next uh, 40 minutes, then you'll have a basis to kind of work in a very efficient way uh, with building Lister-based kinds of systems, which, which is, in my mind, is the foundation for a timeline. So this is kind of setting you up to kind of think more uh, clearly about what you would do when you build a timeline. Um, finally, I'll point out anybody who has questions about panel building, because I'm just going to blow through that super fast. There's a whole series um, by us on widgets and panel layouts, which is 10 um, series. It's a series of 10 videos. It's overly in depth, super boring, but um, but it's it gives you most of what you need to know to build panels, which I'm going to really gloss over um, in this talk. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw them all. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I can see you guys are getting deep on that, so that's good. Um, and so that's the that's kind of. Um, I also looked through your file, so you guys, I, I feel like you guys are at the stage where you're um, you're building complex systems, but you're starting to struggle with massive amounts of nodes and how yeah. they relate together, and like, and and scalability, right? And and also the heaviness of nodes. And um, and so now it's time, if in this stage of your evolution, possibly to start working more with Python and working more efficiently. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna sure. uh, go over. So Thanks. so the goal for this 40 minutes is to build a um, a really simple uh, movie player. So you're just gonna, but it's gonna be Lister based. So you're going to play a movie file off of disk. You're, we're going to populate a list with movie files. We're going to click on those files. 
Um, and then uh, we're going to mix from one movie to the next. So that's all we're going to do. Uh, and so, so that's, but, but so what we're, fo we're not focusing on how to build a movie player. You guys already know how to do that in many ways. Um, what we're focusing on is what the exact moves that I'm doing to, to, to actually build components, because this is the way that internally at Derivative, we build, we're getting closer and closer to building all of our components in the same way. Um, and so this is this is the recipe essentially for for doing that, and 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 uh, Marcus is going to do the same thing because we're not completely in sync at derivative. Um, there's but there's certain things that when you see the common elements, you'll have a really good idea of the things that you really really should be doing, um, and then the, where we deviate is where we're still kind of experimenting, but we're trying to push the workflow in the same direction. So um, uh, so. Obviously, you're going to start by building a component, and um, and in this case, you know the, the component we're going to call it mixer because um, that's what it's going to do. It's going to mix two videos together. It's not necessarily going to be a great name by the time you're done the component, because <laughs> you might have changed the way that like you're thinking of what you needed to build. Don't worry about it. Um, that's why you want to kind of keep it as general as possible. But um, there's refactoring tools and stuff to allow you to change these main names, but um, so the first thing I would do, like really almost immediately um, when you're building the top level component is I would name, I would create a parent shortcut and I'd call it uh, Mixer. Have you guys been doing that at all? I'd look through your file. I don't see you guys I'm doing using that. global names uh, for, uh, for the in incoming value in order to actually uh, all the time know what is what and right. uh, the auto for the talks auto load. I actually I didn't tell it. So theoretically, each talks you have is if if it's properly formatted in the present making, you can drag and drop it from the Windows Explorer and we you load it automatically. So there I'm using uh, the global name because without it, it's impossible. Yeah, that's what I thought I saw. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, uh, the way that the global app shortcut was conceived, at least, it's for very advanced usage probably for hyper system builders. I've, I've never used a global shortcut in any component I've, or structure I've ever used, except for like heavy systems where you're building like uh, something like widgets where it's like going to be deployed. Um, so if you, my, I, I, the way, what I wanna say is if you don't know if you're advanced enough to be using global shortcuts, you probably shouldn't be using them. And everybody should be using parent shortcuts. So that's the right way, I think, to think about these two important parameters. The parent shortcut allows you to talk to this component um, from inside, but only from inside. The global, if I moved Mixer to here, um, for example, then I copied Mixer once, we're gonna have an error immediately. So um, that means, that you're really kind of, you know, you, you better be, you better have a really big plan to uh, to be using um, something in the global namespace. Um, so I don't recommend it um, in general. So you can take that with a grain of salt, but that's the way it goes. Okay. Um, and there, there's probably a whole other conversation about how to make big systems with, with that uses a global namespace. That's not the topic for today. We're talking about making components. So that's the first step. You name your node and you name your parent shortcut. Then you open the component editor, customize component, and um, we're, we're gonna have a page of controls probably because this is a top level uh, <coughs> component. So you might as well add a page right now and call it mixer controls. So you'll see I'm starting to reuse my names a lot here. Um, this is called mixer, parent shortcut is mixer. This might be called mixer zero one day uh, at some point. This is going to have a, a, a parameter page, a custom parameter page called Mixer Controls. So immediately we're going to start using this to populate it with uh, the top level controls for the component. Um, and then we're going to add an extension. So really this talk is about extensions. And so right away, and this is really how I immediately will set up any, any system. This is exactly how I start. Uh, and I would call it Mixer, I'd call it Parent Shortcut capital M, always because it's a name, you can think of a parent shortcut like your parents' name and your parents' name 
is capitalized. Um, so mixer um, and uh, and then ext is capitalized and then click add. That will create an extension code that when you click edit, it's going to um, look like this. Um, it looks kind of scary to the first to a, a beginner in Python, but there's nothing scary about classes compared to regular just being a regular early Python uh, programmer. You don't really or like a uh, user because you, you just have to know of some very, very few things uh, to get going, which we're going to dissect this and get to the bottom of that today. Um, OK, so I'm going to close that for now. What that what happened when you did that in reality is it automatically just added this um, extension uh, code into a text stat and it tied the extension module here. You don't need to know about it. I'm not even going to get into it. Um, there's going to be one extension attached um, and that, that extension is going to get attached via this process. So there's no more you need to know about that. Um, OK, so. So the nice thing is now we have a page of a, a, for a home for custom parameters. Um, and we have a, a Python class where we can put all of our code. So I see really most people or a lot of people developing, um, um, especially when you're an intermediate, you're putting your code in the callback locations, you're putting them near like where they get clicked and your code starts to get more and more like sort of spread out in your system and therefore it gets very difficult to manage it eventually because you don't you can't remember where your code is and it's very difficult for people to to, to go in and look at your system as well so um, the suggestion here and you'll see that as we go that that's what we're doing is we're always putting any you know functional code uh, into this single location which is the extension okay so now we're ready to start building a system. So uh, what do we want to see here? We want to, well, OK, one more thing. Um, when you're working inside of a network, you should immediately like always be thinking about your parent here. And therefore, I don't need to go up a level to work on my parent. I can just right click on this guy. I can bring up its parameters. So there's my parent's parameters. Good. I can bring up its component editor is here i'll put him there and i can also uh view the panel okay and um so now we have all we need to kind of work inside and start building out a user interface and a in a more complex system so um the first thing i'm going to do as well is uh change the floating the viewer aspect ratio to be unconstrained and I'm going to tell it to stuff the window scale from it into the width and height. So now when I view my window size view, I can, this will actually change the size of the window. Okay, and so if, yeah, you guys said you watched that video, so um, you'll understand why. Okay, right away, I'm gonna put down a component, a container component. I'm gonna call it UI. And I'm going to set it to be fill fill. And now we have a home for our lister. And um, uh, because that's ultimately what we're going to build right now is just a lister. So we can start to mess around with it and start to look at how it works, how the lister works. So um, let's go grab a lister. So I'm going to go into UI component and open the palette up. We're going to go to UI and I'm going to grab a lister. Okay, there it is. It's a panel as well. Uh, you'll see the lister probably, there's the lister right there. So what do we want it to do? We want it to fill as well. So there, fill, fill. Okay, so now we're ready to play with our lister, nice. Um, okay, very important next thing, Lord, sort of operational thinking here. Um, <coughs> we've we've Created, we're building a system that's a panel that holds stuff. That So it has a UI. The UI is located here. Um, so you're going to put all your UI elements in there. That way you don't mix up your data and all your systems and all that stuff with your user interface. You want to keep those things as separate as possible to make your life easier because you might want to change the UI one day. You might not want the UI in the future. 
blah blah. So you want to you want to think about these things kind of as separate, um, uh, uh, completely separate systems that need to communicate with each other properly. So um, so the so that's why like we know we need a table, right? Because it's going to be a table of movies. So the first thing you can do is just without thinking too hard, say, okay, I know I need a table. What is this table? It's going to be a list of movies, let's say. Okay, fine. What do we want to call it? Uh, I don't know. Playlist. How about playlist? Are we going to be okay with that in the long term? Probably. So that's what we're building. We're building a, a system that, that is operating on this thing, which is, uh, which is a table. So the nice thing to come into when you, when you open up a system, uh, like in, like this new mixer component, you go inside, you can see immediately that it has things in the main level network. That's what the system's controlling. The user interface should be outside um, in the UI component, ready to control it, or maybe from outside somewhere else. Your extension is right there, okay? So you don't need to work this way, but this is the way I work. Top left corner is extension and code. Top right corner, user user interface. Bottom right corner, steak and potatoes, which means like everything that you're building, everything like the meat of your system is there, right? And then everything to the left is going to be callbacks and communication. So this is a fairly simple system, so we can get away with that paradigm. It's not going to apply always, but but it's going to get you thinking in the right way, which is you have your your code, you have your user interface, and you have your system that you're building, and then you probably have interaction and callbacks and things like that. So, um, uh, so let's let's start thinking what we want in here. So we want to put movies, movie files in here. Okay. So um, we need we need a way to get at movie files. Uh, I don't want to code that, right? So we we tried not to code as much as possible in touch. That's the trick. Um, so let's try to see what we can use. So there's the uh, folder dot, right? Okay, so the folder dot gets us files, great. So that's gonna be easy for me to access with an extension, with a Python extension. And uh, let's just look at the, oh, let's use the name in the path, that's fine. And I, I'm just gonna pick a new folder with just movies in it. Uh, so names will be MP3. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go to a folder. E. Uh, okay. So I know this folder has a bunch of movies underneath it. And if I turn off, um, include subfolders, turn it on, then I get all the movies underneath that folder. Great. Okay. So now I have an easy place to access uh, some movie files. Um, okay, so now we're going to start writing code. So because I, I, we, we're going to want to, well, I'm just I'm showing you guys how to use extensions, so that's the most important thing. So um, so let's so what's the first step? I want let's just the first step is I want to move all these movie files from the disk on into my playlist. So how am I going to do that? Well, immediately, I what I really want to be able to do is click buttons, right? Because that's that makes my life easy. So uh, immediately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add item, add items as a um, pulse button at our, on our top level mixer component, and you'll see we get a pulse button here. Are you guys using custom comp comp parameters much yet? <coughs> yeah, okay. but not in this patch. Yeah, okay. Actually, cool. we were stuck it because we were not able to auto-populate them, so thank you. <laughs> cool. Okay, so yeah, so this is a good workflow for... You immediately, if you're going to be writing scripts in Python, I recommend this because when you want to run your script, what do you want to do? You want to click a button, right? That's the easiest way to see if it's working. Um, and so, so that's what I'm going to show right now is how to hook up a button to this, uh, to a script. So, uh, so now we have a pulse button here. So this is also a very common um, callback, which is par, ex par execute. Put a par execute below your mixer. It's going to be. It needs to point up to that guy, 
So we can um, type our first. You can you could type parent like this, and it'll go one level up. But we know it's also named uh, mixer, so we can type parent dot mixer, and that way, no matter where this 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 um, dat goes below, it'll always work because it'll always be looking to the parent mixer. And wow. if we're going to do this yeah. over and over again in different ways. And so this is your first glimpse at why mix naming your parent is important. Um, and but we're, there's multiple ways of doing this. And so we're just going to go over this over and over again and probably going to run out of time. But uh, OK, so. Um, uh, so, OK, first thing to understand here is that um, uh, the add items parameter is is a custom parameter and it's notice the name do you see the name it's uppercase a right so the name of the parameter is uppercase for the first letter any built-in parameter is lowercase okay so that's how we distinguish between custom parameters and uh, built-in parameters in touch the names the actual names can't be the same therefore the custom ones are uppercase first letter. And every other letter after that is always lowercase. OK, so if you, you you'll get used when you're programming things, you'll get used to seeing these names with the first letter uppercase and then a really long lowercase name. That's probably a parameter. OK, so try to remember that Param custom parameters are always uppercase with a lowercase. So that's one sort of really important core concept when you're programming, right? OK, so now we have a name that we can deal with in this par execute. So uh, par executes are the pathway or one of the main pathways to run extension code. So um, uh, the simplest thing is pulses. So by default, the par execute comes down with a bunch of callbacks inside which are a bunch of functions that run when an event happens on this parameter box but we don't care about most events so we can turn off the value change and we can turn off uh built in and we just care about custom pulses and so i'm just going to put star here so any now any pulse that runs on this parameter box is going to run this function here on pulse in this dat so let's delete everything else so we don't go crazy and forget what how simple this is that's all it is okay so when i click this button it passes in par so let's see what that looks like in the text port again we're going to do this all the time which is to put a debug here never type print in touch ever Never a need. Always type debug. If you think you're going to type print, type debug. Why is it better? Because it shows you the print. It shows you a print statement, which is right here. But it yeah. also tells you where it came from and what line it came from. So you'll never have those straggling print statements in your file. Um, that would rather put, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that makes your life a thousand times easier. Just that alone. And. How does it put yeah. Uh, so, so is it working? Yes, it's working. Yay, we've done it. So, just by that single move, this thing should almost be. This is this thing alone is like that. That connects. That connects you to all kinds of power. So, um, uh, uh, so that's that's the sort of gateway in. So now we can add more and more pulse buttons. Therefore, we can execute more and more um, things functions. Um, okay, so. The simplest way to do this, and there's more advanced ways, um, but but this is the easiest and clearest, uh, is we could say if par dot name because it passes in the par object, which is right here, right? It passes the whole object in, so you can find anything out about the par with this. But we can say if par dot name because the par object has an, a, a member called name equals um, add capital. You don't need to think; it's or, like you don't need to look too hard. Um, because ideally you're going to name your names the same as the label. So yeah. you're going to look at the label, and but you're going to know that it has to be typed like this. 
right? With no spaces, all, all lowercase, except for the first letter, okay? And then you'll get used to seeing this and you'll be like, oh, okay, that's, that's like a parameter. Okay, got it. And then, um, and then we need to, now we want to run a function. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's interesting. Um, we do, we, where we, what, what are we going to do there? So this is where it's like, okay, we're jumping off into extensions now. Um, I know, but remember we named our mixer our extension. What was it? Mixer. Mixer. Well, not quite. What was the extension called? Mixer. No. No, it was called Mixer EXT. EXT, yes. Yeah. It's right here. And you'll see that there's the module, Mixer EXT, that the file that it's in, or the dat that it's in. But you'll see the class, Mixer EXT. That's the extension. It's an extension class. It's a class. It's a Python um uh, uh it's a python object that gets attached to the node the component the top level component it's a python object that gets attached to the component which makes it extra smart with python and so you do that using classes so the class is called ex mixer ext okay. okay so 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 now we know so remember i showed you parent.mixer that that gives you the mixer component, right? So we can also type ext.mixer ext add items function. And now we can call the extension mixer extension and we can create a function called add items. Okay. So uh, let's see if that works. We'll open the text port. Clear. And pulse. Okay, air mixer extension object has no attribute add items. That's because we haven't made the function uh, uh, add, add, add items, right? Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so let's open our extension. Okay, so here's more scary stuff that we don't need. <laughs> Get rid of this. We don't need it for this talk. Get rid of this. Really, that's all you really need to understand right now. Okay. Because um, I just want to mention, Ivan showed me that recently he hit a very useful function in the um, add extension button. If you hold the add extension button, um, yeah, if you make a new one just for for fun. Okay. Yeah. And uh, give it a name, and then hold the add button. Ah, standard empty. And empty. So let's and see how empty his, because he knows. Nice um, yes, it's that's perfect. So that's really all you need to know extensions are, okay? I, I, I do understand that uh, this init, this underscore, underscore init business is weird. Um, and so um, it's just a name of a function. They put underscore, underscore around it because they didn't want to interfere with whatever you wanted to call your functions. So they made it really ugly like that. No one's ever going to type like that um, unless they're declaring a class. So this is the first function in a class. This gets this function runs when the class object, which is called mixer ext, is instantiated and attached to the component. So we do all that crazy fancy work for you. All it does is when when the extension runs, um, it attaches itself and it passes in the, the the component that it attaches itself to. So that's self owner comp. So whenever you're talking to the class, you're always talking to yourself. So you can think of it really as yourself. You, you put yourself in the shoes of the component you're building, which is the mixer component. So that's what I'm building right now. That's me. I'm working with myself. And uh, and so now we can start developing stuff. It's cool. Okay, so, I have a little question. So uh, just to clarify everything in, in my mind. So making a little comparison with the, the open open GL code is like we are defining something outside from the void and then we use it inside of the void. So we are defining things in the classes and then use the power of what we define inside of the component that is our void kind of. Yeah, I don't understand the GLSL part though. What's the what's your? Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct. That's exactly what we're doing. But what were you saying with regards to GLSL? 
Uh, yeah, so I don't know, for example, in the GSL code, you have a void function, and before of the void function, you declare function, right. that, and you can use it in the void. Yes, correct. Yeah, I think that's fair. We're, 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 we're adding functionality onto our, we're making the mixer component smarter and smarter, right? That's what we're adding. Mm -hmm. We're adding all kinds of machinery to that. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, I think that's fair uh, ish. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Thanks. Um, yeah. So, what do we need here? Do we remember? We need a function. I can't remember. It's called add items. Okay. Yes. We're talking directly to the extension ext mixer ext. And therefore, I can um, just add this function called add items. Um, and when you add a function to a class, you immediately type self. That's every time, because you're attaching this function to this to yourself. So you're adding a new function to yourself. Um, and uh, that's it. Oh, if you wanted to be nice and clean, you could add a comment right after and say uh, this adds the uh, items to the playlist. <clears throat> okay, now we know what we need to do. So it's always good to have a mission statement for your um, function. That's why I recommend doing that right away because now you know what you do. And if it's a really long paragraph, then you probably should break it up into more functions. And if it's a short sentence, then keep it focused on, on that task. So, um, so we, we need to get um, movies and put them into the table. So we know our movies are right here, right? So this is called, uh, this is our, fo our folder dat. Um, so there's gonna be, when you're building systems like this, there's gonna be important components. Or, or, sorry, important operators inside of your system. Some nodes come and go, some nodes need to be there or the whole system's gonna break, right? Yeah. Especially in the context of um, extensions. So for those operators that um, that um, uh, for those operators that you that are really important, you should immediately um, start adding uh, op shortcuts for them. Um, and and you can do that from the component editor. So you can name the shortcut, and I will always be specific about the type. So um, I know there's one important folder dat inside of my system inside. So I'm going to call it folder dat. Uppercase F, uppercase D. Why? Because it's it's an internal shortcut name. It's a name. So remember, your parent shortcut is like your parent. Your parent has a name like David, and it starts with the D. So in the same case here, uh, the folder dat is important. This is a regular name. You might call it playlist dat or movie movie dat or whatever you want to call it, but I'm just going to call it folder dat, and I'm going to say it's located in dot slash inside of me folder. So now we have easy access to our folder dat. That makes our extension code simple. Or it continually it continues to be simple because all we need to do here now that we've just created that is we have internal operator dot folder dat and we've got that guy just by doing that really nice and easy what do we want from it we want all of its rows um, let's make sure that, that that's that's correct i'm going to put a debug around it it okay so because we went through this in order it's not hard for me to run this because that's the thing you sometimes you write code and if your system's not set up right, you're like, okay, now how do I run it? Well, it's easy now. You just have to click this button. So um, let's we'll pull up a text port again and run it and see what happens. Okay, we've got our movies. Okay. So next. Uh, we need to put these files into, um, uh, into a, to the, into the playlist tab. Okay, playlist app. Is that also important? Sure. Let's make another internal app shortcut. Call it playlist app. 
call, where where is that located? Inside of myself, located at playlist. Okay. All right. Let's go back here and say uh, for. Uh, I wish I could turn off these in session notes. I wish so Any suggestion? too, but I can turn off set mine to alarms only. I'm going to say, hopefully Focus that does assist. it. Okay. <clears throat> um, now we need to uh, get the playlist stat and put those those files into it. So we could say four. Or row in. Ugh. Sorry. Row. <laughs> um, for row in there. Yeah. So for each row in um, all of these rows, and I don't care about the first row. So I'll just remove the first row by using this notation here. Um, then we can put the row um, into our playlist. So it's IOP dot playlist dot um, append row. Oh, that should do it. Uh, hmm. Just sorry, that's super annoying for me. Focus, don't show up. Okay. There we go. Let's see if that works. Look at our playlist. Items. No, fortunately. Text port. It's an extra. And good. It worked. So now we've made a playlist um, and really just two lines of code uh, because we're using our simple uh, op shortcuts. So um, yeah, that's making a, a list or making a playlist data source. So, um, so notice we put our data in a different location than the user interface. We haven't even engaged with the user interface yet. Um, but um, but we but now we have our data and and we've also marked our data location with a very important internal op shortcut which is called playlist dat. So um, so now we can easily access this data in the lister component by going to the lister component and going to the input table dat and saying op by op. And make that an expression. And boom, we've got our user interface is now populated with our uh, movies. OK. Um, <clears throat> so uh, now let's just really quickly take a look at um, the lister component. So uh, we want to format the lister component. And that's not so hard. If we turn off auto define columns and then uh, edit <coughs> the config component on the inside, or oh, sorry, not the component, edit the uh, the column definitions. And now we can, with this table, we can format our data. Um, so, for example, uh, I can um, go back here and take a look at what's um, what's in here. So the first the first column is the movie name. So we can call this name, which is fine. Um, and uh, da, 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 da. sorry, I need to cheat a little bit. Yeah, so we're going to call this media. And you'll see if I change the column here, it changes the column header here. So if I copy this and I paste, insert copy, and I make the next column say the, um, the uh, path, and you'll see if the path um, in this case 
is the second column, it'll automatically find the second column of data here. All right. So, sorry, this screen real estate is getting tough, but there's two columns right now um, in the older dat over here. And so if you add another column, let's add another column like date created. Okay, so now there's a new column here. If I, yeah, if I, but there's no new column here yet because we haven't loaded the, um, the, 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 the latest data. The nice thing is it'll all happen automatically because of the way we wrote our code. Um, all I need to do is open the parameter box up and click go, and then we should end up with another column here. Um, Add items. Hmm. Why is that? Sorry, I'm just looking for my extension. Is it is it auto defining the code? Oh no, it's the exact oh, it's probably code. because no, that's not why. No. Um, four rows in. Is it bad row? Hmm. Maybe an error. What's the error? Yeah. Clear. Huh, what's wrong with you? Oh, must, is there no date on some of these files or something? Okay, well, at any rate, let's not worry about that. Um, if I wanted to add that empty column for whatever reason, why it's freaking out, um, then I could add another column to the um, column definitions. So for example, I could say copy, insert, copied, and say date. Um, and then we'll get that column as well. That'll, why it's not returning me um, the extra column will probably work itself out in a second. Um, and then there's the delete guy here, right? So, um, so, the lister component is really easy to use. It, well, it's it's really powerful, I guess I would say. And if you watch Matthew Gans thing, it's going to be kind of life changing for you guys because you're going to be able to manage all kinds of different things, whether that's queues, movie files, image files, like externals, whatever geometry. Um, and it also allow you to start building queue lists, which are like uh, which is our which are the data structure of a queue list is is a pre is a precursor to a really nice timeline system. Um, so uh, this will kind of set you up for that as well. Okay, yeah. so um, so let's start looking at uh, how mm -hmm. to interact with the extension with the um, lister. So I'm just going to look inside of that head here. So okay, so the first thing we want to do, let's say, is clear the lister. So um, you can do that quite easily if we come here and say clear lister. Add a new button. So that's what you're always doing is adding uh, uh, more buttons to run scripts. But now we have to edit our um, parameter callback, which is here. So let's add a new callback, uh, which is if elif r.name equals clear list. What do you want to name the function, do you think? about clear list. It, well, notice the spelling difference or like the capitalization difference. This is a this is a um, parameter and this is the function. Um, okay, so now we know we have to go to an extension code and we need to make that function def clear list. Don't need anything except for self. Which is this to you? Clears. We'll play this dot. Okay, let's do that. 
IR right, playlist. Uh, clear. That's a function of the DAX. And see how that goes. Yeah. Ah. I think you forgot uh, the okay. colon. Yeah, yeah. And click. Okay. Don't know what that error was. Huh. It's an old error. Okay, clear and add. Okay, so now we now we can add items to our list and we can clear our list. Okay, that's good. Um, now I'm going to look at my next function. So let's do um, let's set up a system here. So now now that we're um, now we're able to click uh, movies, you can imagine we're just a step away. I'm actually playing one of these movies, right? So yeah. let's let's just get that going. So movie talk. We file in. I'm going to look into the future a little bit, and I'm going to say I want to be able to go from uh, one movie to the next, and I want to crossfade. I don't want to just hard cut, right? So that suggests to me that we need a movie file in A and a movie file in B. Um, yeah, okay. So now these are probably important operators, right? Agreed? They're two movie players. So they're, let's give them let's give them a name. Movie A. Just dot slash. <clears throat> so th those guys are nice and easy to um, access now. Uh, but but we just want to get going. So it'd be nice if we clicked here and just saw this guy load that movie just to start, right? So um, let's do that. So we're going to need. Um, to we want to run the extension when you click, okay? So now you're going to learn how to run the callbacks in the lister component. So the lister component has a callback system here, edit callbacks, and here it is here. And look, Ivan left us uh, a little function that we can uncomment out, and now we're connected to the clicking on a selection of a row, okay? So let's take a look and see what that looks like. I click here, and it gives me back a, um, a formatted dictionary. This was formatted nicely for me yesterday. Why is it not? Oh, I'm probably not in the right version of touch. That's unfortunate. Um, I'm gonna be so bombastic to quit and actually load the right version of touch because it makes it easier to read. Um, is that true? Does anyone know online like Marcus? The is right. the new? Is that correct? The right version being <laughs> the version that is uh, on online. Are like you the, opening thirty k? Is that what you mean? No, it wasn't thirty k <laughs> though. No, 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 it wasn't thirty k. No, I don't know. Sorry. Um, Okay, but at any rate, there there was a version where it was formatting those dictionaries so they're easier to see, and I thought it was the official version. Uh, so just coming up right now, session uh, here and live opened and current no no new column official. So hopefully we'll get a more nicely formatted version of um, of the dictionary that comes out of the info because it makes life easy. Close my code. Okay, and let's try that again. I'm going to open up the text port, and I'm going to open up my UI. 
click. Oh, too bad. It must have been using <laughs> a future version or something. <sighs> okay, so th these are a little bit harder to parse because the dictionaries are laid out so terribly. But let's clear this and read this. When I click here, if we look at this extension or the callback, all it's doing is it's running every time you click on this row, it runs this function and it passes you in a dictionary object called info. Okay, and this is very common practice in touch with all the sort of production built systems. Let's say path, they pass the info object around. So the immediate thing you should do is not type print, but type debug. And then when we click, we get this and we have to read it. Oh, <laughs> now debug. it's formatted correctly. Because of debug, there's another debug reason to debug. Okay. That's yeah. so cool. Okay, so there's another great reason. Remember that massive stuff? Now we can read this dictionary. So um, that's cool. Uh, so we know what happened. For example, we know what row was clicked. Row was row 13. We know uh, what the media file was. That's pretty handy. We know the path for the media file and so on. Um, so uh, let's uh, start parsing this. So what are we going to put into this extension? Well, remember what we put into the other extension. It was ext.mixer.ext. Well, in this case, it's on select row. So fine, I'm just going to pass this along to my central home, which is the extension. Now we can close this and forget about the extension or forget about the callback and we can go looking for our extension code, which is up here. Okay, so we need to implement that function here. So let's row. Because you always have to pass yourself when you're in class. And then you tell yourself what you're doing. And what am I going to do here? I'm going to handle. And does the um, select row callback. Oh, Mr. Fine. And then debug info. We're doing the same thing over and over again. <coughs> um, and let's see if that worked. Clear, open our viewer, click, it works. So now we're back in our nice comfy extension home. Let's do that. Okay. What are we gonna do with this? Well, we need to start parsing it. So let's keep parsing it. We can read our extension. So we know it's a dictionary. It's going to have these square brackets. And we need to pull out one of these strings. So it's going to be um, row and row data. So we want row data. Let's just see. It. Let's just see what that looks like, row data. So row data. And open up our parameter box. And click. Uh, oh, sorry, it's not parameter box this time. It's a lister. And see, this it's returning an ordered dictionary with these names. So an ordered dictionary is again the same kind of system. So we just, if we want one of those items, what do we want? The movie file path, which I don't see, but I'm seeing the movie. Oh, there, there's the movie folder there. So um, path, there it is. Path. So it's row data. Yeah. Okay, done. Let's see if that worked. So click. Cool. Now we've minimal parsing and we're getting our um, our path back for the file. So what do we want to do with that? Well, we want to stick it into the movie file, the movie player here. Okay. So that's pretty easy code, right? Because it's the exact same code as up here, almost. So let's just do the first player. So we can call this uh, path now. So path equals. 
probably have done path because you um, made your path. Just say I up dot playlist dot. Sorry, not playlist dot. Movie play or movie A R dot file equals. TT shortcut. There's no movie A. I got my. Oh, it's I op probably, which I type. I op. It's not movie A. I guess I did something else. So let's take a look. I can look on the parameter box too on the common page. It is movie A. I op movie A. Hmm. Let's put that to the test, the text top down. I, uh, I've seen this before. It might be because it hasn't initialized. I up uh, A. What am I doing wrong here? I uh, is it uh, no? It's not. Sorry, I almost never use IOPS, but is it uh, movie file? Small yeah. O. It's not. No, it's not. Small oh, okay. Okay. Good file in A. There you go. Okay. Okay. Good. So now it works. When in doubt, and you're trying to test something on the inside, go put a text top down. Go to the text parameter. Test it out. So now that should work. And so when we click here. We're now um, loading a different movie. Um, great. OK, so let's just take a look at that code again. So um, we passed along the select row callback from the lister click on select. We analyzed the info object for the path, which was easy to read because we used the debug statement um, in the actual callback dat of the lister. And then we took that movie path and we just fed it into this uh, this guy here. Okay, so we could get more fancy. Which, how much time do I have left? Um, minus uh, 17 okay, minus. minutes. Okay, all right. So mm. like a cooking show, like a cooking show, we'll just uh, put this away. <laughs> and let's take a look at where we could have gone here, which is... Um, you know, just just more implementing of the same functions. So let's just really quickly look and see what what functions got implemented where. So inside of UI, inside of the lister, the callbacks for the lister component grew, but it didn't get that much more complicated. Um, there was just more implementing of these of more callbacks that were passed along up to the extension. And if you go to this um, a help. If you go here and uh, go like this, you can get all the callbacks that are available to you to power the lister. So you can pass all of these things up to the extension and make some magic with your extension with really simple Python. Um, and then as well, there was more buttons added to the uh, mixer controls. There was um, really just a mixer. Uh, to for A and B. So if we look here, um, and I click here, you'll see that it's crossfading. So it's doing a crossfade, um, and it's delaying it. And so th it's really not a big step difference. And I'll just really quickly show you the code for that. It's just. Uh, <clears throat> it's just this code here. And let's just go through this real quickly. So um, the there was two slots, mm -hmm. slot A and slot B, which is movie A and movie B. And the player is either currently movie A or currently movie B. You get the path of, of the thing that you select. And yeah. then you tell the, to, to, to populate the file of movie A or movie B, flip flop. And then we run the cross function. Look how simple this cross function is. It's just um, sets the parameter at the top level called mix AB, which is a toggle. 
So again, like when you're building systems, like the functional bits of things that like do stuff, like for example, toggles that you might want it, like you would need to go from A to B to A to B, then you can just make, you can, you can put it on the top level and you can, um, in the customized component, you can, um, you can tell it to make it read only. Therefore, the user knows, oh, that's important information. It's like a variable um, uh, that you want to relay the user. You want them to say, oh, I know it's in, it's in A or it's in B, um, but it's not something that they can, they want to modify. They also might want to yeah. use that to extract data from it, right? They, they can actually get the file out from the system. So you're publishing info for your users, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, you'll see the things changing. Yeah. So so you'll see. You'll, just to close, you'll see. I don't know. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Michelle. What's the, what's the most up to date component to show? Just to, to kind of underscore this that follows these rules, Michelle. Uh, anything or uh, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe Marcus knows actually. Um, um, I say, um, well, look at the. Uh, you just put some new ones in there, right? The, what about the camera? The, uh, you... Yeah, the camera is good. That? Oh it's yeah, it's at the bottom camera. now. Uh, I had it's... to. Yeah, it's at the bottom. Bottom. What's it called? Uh, viewport camera. Okay. So, um, okay, let's just, this is a more complex system, yeah. right? But you can see what's going on here now. You kind of understand now, right? It's a bunch of parameters. There's an extension. There's other stuff like callbacks. And there's really not much going on in here, right? It's a very similar component. And then there's a view and it's probably controlling some camera object somewhere, which is not even inside of this component. So, um, okay. you know May what I mean? I do a little, little question. So I miss a piece. So is there like a way to append custom parameter automatically to a, a component with a script or with an extension? A custom parameter to add a custom parameter? To add a custom parameter automatically with the, with the script is possible with the, with, a, with oh, the yeah, extension? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, if, you, if you go to... Um, uh, touch design. If you type touch designer, uh, custom parameters, there is um, a lot of code you can acquaint yourself with, um, which is how to add. Yeah. You have to add a page and then you add append a type, which is like a float or a menu. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. So that's how that works. Yeah, you have to manage you have to manage the custom parameters yourself. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely possible to do that through scripts. Um, I think this will work. Yeah. So if you go, um, if you make a custom parameter box that you like, that you like, that you think you like, and you, then you go, yeah. you go to the page and you go copy. And then open up like a, a code editor and add a new page and paste. Then you'll get the JSON for all of those parameters as well. Mm -hmm. Ah, wonderful. So you can change just the little variables. And yeah, so then it, it might be easier. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, then you can get in there and just kind of massage it the way that you want it. Um, um, yeah. And load it with. Yeah, load it with the TD functions, right? Yeah, I think TD, TD functions, which is which we won't get into right now, but there's a module that you can load, which will allow you to load that whole set as a JSON and just plop it onto your, um, onto your parameter box. Um, Jared, sorry to uh, um, have enough time for uh, Michelle as well. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I'm definitely done. Yeah. Should we? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't want to break that off because uh, oh, there's sorry. a lot of in there's a lot of stuff in there, and um, I guess I'm gonna uh, repeat a little bit in the same direction. Uh, just um, well, I'm not sure if it's repeating or it's just to it actually shows then that uh, these concepts apply to a lot of the questions that you had. Mm. So. Um, 
w one thing that you were asking was um, how to, well, we, we want to look into extensions further, but then you also asked how to basically create a log of everything, how everything connects to everything. Yes. And mm, you were also asking about um, uh, loading TOX files or auto-loading TOX files and how to uh, kind of soft load them which is not necessarily possible in a standard way so that you would put a base component down and then like uh, load the external TOX. It probably will chuck your system, like it's not threaded in this way. But um, I have here these seven sound, um, sound visualization components in a little setup that's very similar to what Jared just showed. I've got two slots and one where I can mix the two slots and yeah. I have some uh, images and here some components and I can drag these components on and it loads them in the background and then place them. And I can replace these components here and if I'm right, there is no, like the, uh, um, I don't have a, my timeline is not, or my frame, uh, uh, my frame rate's not going down because it's all engine components that load to your access in the background. <laughs> Bless you. Um, and uh, at the same time, I'm keeping track of the, uh, I'm keeping track of um, what is loaded where, what is connected with what in a very similar, uh, simple way. I have a destination and a source and my destination, because I just have a mixer here, like a two, uh, two part mixer is literally just the one or two because my basic mixer just has two slots basically, where I yeah. need to keep track of. I just need to keep track of where it's coming from, which would be the source and where it's going to. Um, so obviously that system would become more complex if you, with the amount of sources that you have in different types. But yeah. one thing that's important here is that I'm following what Jared was saying earlier. I have one system that's only the UI that has almost no other uh, functionality in it. So it's um, a bunch of container uh, panel components with all the fills as well. I've got two listers here. <clears throat> These listers are going out. Let me split this up. They're actually going out into my, what I called my whole system, which is kind of where all the functional parts lie. And they get to uh, um, they get to these two uh, libraries of uh, components, one holding all my TOXs that I have, uh, that I'm loading in the background, and the other one holding all the images that I can display. Um, and uh, by this, they're filling here, like I have basically my, this is my table. It's very simple in this way. This is my table that fills this, uh, list component here. Um, yeah. It gives me enough, I kind of build it this way. If um, in the UI, by fetching it from this table, I kind of know where it's coming from. So I have, I know my UI knows where the, where the data is coming from. So I can make decisions based on that in the UI, um, in my drag, um, in my drop script. Um, I couldn't, we have a new drag drop system, but unfortunately I couldn't get this to work with the, um, with the new callback, uh, drag drop system. So I had to use the old, um, the uh, legacy, um, drag drop for this. But, um, so what I'm doing is basically I'm fetching the source name and source path, which should point me to the lister. Mm -hmm and the destination, which is either slot one, slot two. And then I'm passing this on to my um, extension that I have for my UI, parent.ui. You see, I always name also my parameters, just as uh, my components, just as uh, Jared was mentioning. Um, I have my extensions here. I have my uh, parent shortcuts here, so I can move around nicely. And then in this UI extension, I have a connect and a disconnect. Now I do a couple things here. Not everybody agrees with this, but uh, as Jerry said, we are experimenting quite a bit with these um, kind of ideas. Where is it? This? No, sorry. 
um, here. Edit. Yes. So um, what I do with my extensions often is that I I kind of um, edit these functions a little bit so that they're um, that I'm uh, inclined to fill out all the information so other people can read it. So what I do is if I make a function uh, sample self and then maybe it takes an R, an uh, input a which should be an integer. And ah, another b, which should be a string, and it will return uh, a list. And uh, it's not gonna, well, let's do return a comma b. And now I installed here in Visual. Uh, What's it called? Visual Studio Code. I installed a little extension which automatically generates stock strings for me. So I actually get already, if I do this decoration here, A is my input um, parameter. Int is the type that it's expecting. In Python, you can pass anything, so you don't have to obey to it. But the user is going to know, oh, okay, it needs an integer and B needs to be a string. And then I can happily fill out here the help text this just returns input as list. Uh, and here I can say a number and a string and then list combined. And now if I reference this function anywhere else, uh, even if I now say, okay, self dot uh, what do I sample? If I open up parentheses here, now it already tells me what it expects, what it needs as inputs. So it's kind of nice to actually uh, spend the time to um, and decorate everything nicely with uh, explanations and um, what types are expected. Um, okay, short sideline. So. Back to this, as I said, I'm going into my um, my drag drop actually, or my drop action goes into my UI extension. And now uh, yeah. this is debatable what I'm doing here and I'm happy to be convinced in a different way. Here I'm going all the way back to parent.project. Parent.project is the uh, project slash project one and then into my whole system. And there I run a function called connect where I'm passing in the full source and the destination again. So the UI talks to my whole system, basically, um, this way. The, uh, the nice part is that apparently I can do all the functionality can be defined in my whole system. So my whole system has an extension, which has a connect and a disconnect. And this is actually what's driving these connections here between my engine loader and the mixer and my image loader and the mixer. So from the outside, this UI is not necessarily required. It can be simply replaced because I can run my connect function from my whole system. So theoretically, uh, not just theoretically, but practically, um, you can say up in the text board, um, let me just drag that in here. Sorry, and I'm trying to be as fast as possible, but that might lead to some uh, misunderstandings. Connect. Uh, connect takes two inputs. One is the uh, operator and the other is the destination. The operator would be something like, um, uh, let's say, base images of butterflies. So, expects it as an operator. And destination should be one. And I hope that works. I haven't tried that out. Ooh, let's put it on zero. That's more. And it didn't work. What did I do? Damn it. 
Okay, I have to figure that out later because otherwise we're running out of time here. Um, mm -hmm. the, the basic idea to it is that that's actually possible. Like these, uh, this interface is just calling the connect function of my whole system. So the UI calls functions that are sitting in the my whole system um, thing. Oops, what's going on? Something is wonky. Therefore, um, the UI can be easily replaced or changed to whatever you like. Um, this is an important part. Now, the other thing that makes it possible is that the UI doesn't need to know about all the thing that actually goes in uh, on in the background. And for the my whole system to connect two things, it might have to do a couple of things. First, uh, well, you're calling the connect. First is it needs to disconnect the old source from the, you might want to unload something, right? Like you have a movie playing, you connect that to an, uh, it's playing. Now you connect something else to this output. It would be nice to unload the uh, currently connected movie. And so first disconnect the old source. And then this here, what I'm doing is I'm going into the new source and I check if the new source has a start function. This way, the connect function of the whole system can go in and say, okay, do we need to initialize the new thing? Like, do we need to load the movie or the, uh, or the TOX file? Does it need to be started? And then only after doing this, I'm connecting it. And using, again, a property here that I have here, I can... Uh, I reference this property in my mixer for the mixer to know what to um, show in slot A and slot B. So, um, yeah, so this way the UI doesn't have to know too much, but you're running all your, all the functionality basically then is run in the, uh, um, in the main system. And that brings me to wanting to look at the engine component, because certainly the engine component is just a component like any other to an extent, except that when you run them or when you place them and have something in there, um, let's see where it is. It creates a whole bunch of touch engine processes. So there's stuff running in parallel here. Um, and this stuff in parallel is, if I, for example, load this one here, then this engine component just has, um, has been loaded. Um, let's have a look at what this is actually doing. These uh, engine components are created with a replicator but I place the engine component inside a base component itself, and this base component has a, um, an extension itself. I'll get to it right away why that is, but before that, I also wanted to mention that I'm creating with the folder dot, this is useful, with the folder dot you can add extra columns to the um, to the output of it. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking the uh, info.base name, which is the file name itself, without the extension, base name, the name without extension, and I'm running it through this tdu.legal name, which means that any special characters will be, re um, will be replaced with underscores. So you have no spaces in there and what that gives me the possibility to do is I can now use these names safely in the replicator to actually create these replicants with exactly that name. So that has a benefit. This component yeah. and anything inside it now knows where the path is. And if we're adding a sound with uh, zero, zero to it, that might go in front of the sound with zero, Two, while the replicator is creating a new component for it, 
it doesn't reload all the rest, which would happen if they, if they shift by index. So if you're using replicator um, row index, then what's happening is that you get, um, you get when something shifts, then a lot of them are being reloaded or the, uh, the input is being re, um, re uh, not the input, the parameters and everything that's referencing these tables is being re, uh, um, redone. Uh, sorry, missing the words here. So in the uh, um, in my extension or in my engine component base component, which is being replicated, um, I placed two more two more things in here. The one is a select, which selects the out one of the uh, component that's being loaded in the engine, and uh, you want to do this. You want to tell people when you when you use TO access with the engine component, you got to follow a certain rule set because they need to have an out one so that you can reference it. If somebody names that out differently, it might be a little bit difficult to get to. Um, but we're working on that. The uh, um, the other thing that I'm doing is I might want to know something about its state. Is it initialized? Is it ready or is it running? This can be info well, good information. And you get this with the info job, but that's not always necessarily useful because now I cannot say uh, base underscore temp dot is initialized or something like this. That doesn't work this way. And so um, those members don't yet exist here for the um, for the engine component. So what I'm doing in the extension is I'm using a couple of properties. I just discovered properties uh, or not discovered, but finally read up on that. So, and it became, ah, they are actually, it's quite useful actually to use these things because um, what I can do is basically, I can reference these chop channels only when, I, when I'm looking at um, initializing. So at this uh, property, so here, Alt T to bring the text port up, up sound with six uh, dot init. Is it? Oh, now I forget what I named those actually. Uh, ready, for example, nice and short, and it returns false because it's reading here, ready, ready is not ready, so it's false. But if I drag um, this onto here, now because it's loaded, oh, that didn't work. I have to look what I'm doing wrong there. Nice and wonderful. And, and <laughs> sorry, That's if I right. understood right, the toxins are loaded into the engine. Yes, correct. So all of these are actually engine components that are loaded by the uh, um, through the replicator. The replicator yeah. creates these base components, replicates them, and fills in the a custom parameter that I added. That's called uh, tox. So it fills in with the file path here. And then this okay. whole thing, this also could be just a um, expression, obviously, to the table. And then inside, it's basically uh, um, initializing those. And then once I drag them on, I'm running this little start, uh, start script or start extension. And um, this then starts this whole process. Um, yeah, that was yeah. a little bit all over the place now. Sorry, uh, try to get this in here. The main point being that if you organize your extensions in a way that you have, um, that you have, if you organize your extensions in a way and your project in a way that you have overarching functions that can be called from your UI so that your UI can be, that your UI can call the connect function and the connect function takes care of the connecting of A to B, then it's easy to also have a log because you only have one function that does it all. So you don't have to from many places 
try to figure out your log, you have one place that actually does it, but the one place does all the connecting for you. So you need to communicate the right data with this extension. But I think that the main idea, split up, splitting up UI and data still works in that, uh, like makes that most possible. Yeah, um, you did it then make it communicate through extension. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you communicate through the extensions, all the data. Wow. Um, didn't get was so powerful. <laughs> so, and uh, there's no specific limit sets. There was a question just if there are how many engines can be replicated. Yeah, I would try that. I, I uh, usually then say you should um, you should just try it out. Um, it depends on, yeah, on yeah, your so computer. Like a lot of a lot of touch designer depends on what your computer can do. So I would just try it out and then see um, how far you can get, and then minus thirty percent so that you can still do other stuff or something. Yeah, I and I know. think I think uh, two two good points from uh, Elbers and uh, Dylan uh, are about you know reaching the bottleneck of your CPU or GPU at some point and yeah. uh, uh, maybe trying to optimize with the number of cores and thread you have on your CPU maybe it's something to try. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what I meant to cover with this is a log. I meant to cover uh, using also listers with extensions to do your drag dropping and splitting up your UI and the touch engine. And because it's late, I just gonna move over to Michelle, right? I, I, I think that was the plan. And I think that's an amazing transition because, um, <laughs> you know, engine comp, touch engine, Unreal Engine, uh, <laughs> What's unreal? <laughs> we didn't talk about any of this before, obviously. This all just and happens. I, I was I was actually going to show, you know, what uh, you guys can see on my screen, that uh, fantastic article from uh, Isabel about uh, introducing the touch engine and also some article from uh, Elbers uh, on the interactive and immersive HQ about the touch engine. Uh, I think those are really good articles that introduce uh, uh, what it is and why the Touch Engine API is uh, the transition. Because you were talking about the engine comp, right, Marcus? And the idea behind the Touch Engine API is really what runs an engine comp, right? So now we're going to head to Unreal Engine. Uh, and the plugin we've been working on is really using all uh, the same features of the engine comp and the touch engine API, since they're all shared. So let's Shall go. Yeah. The background is blurred. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> so yeah, uh, welcome, uh, welcome to the Unreal Engine. Um, here is a little, little playground uh, that we've been working on uh, for the demo today, and uh, the idea um, is that you will have access to a few samples, and all those samples are running. Uh, the touch engine and uh, individ individual tox files. Uh, the tox files should be really easy to understand and they will be documented for all our users to understand. And on touch designer side, it just looks like this. I have my playground here and I prepared a few examples that are all exported to tox files and they are ready to be loaded uh, in Unreal Engine. Uh, I'm looking at the chat a bit, but uh, if you guys see questions that might be interesting there's, to answer. There's nothing special to um, look at in the, or to think about when creating the components, right? Um, well, 
you you would need something to output. So you would need either um, you know actual outputs, uh, just like uh, in the engine comp, right? Uh, you would have uh, parameters that could be considered outputs, like at the top level, inputs or outputs, and um, the actual uh, inputs and outputs for uh, tops, dats, and shops. That's what we will support, just like for the engine comp. Um, on uh, the parameter side of things, I think we support them all. If not all, it's mostly all of them. Um, so here's a little example, a uh, simple uh, blend texture where we have uh, just uh, uh, two textures within the tox and we can uh, blend uh, between them. And I will show how it works on the Unreal side of things. Uh, please uh, chat and people watching us, keep in mind that it's uh, better to be released soon, but better. People always have to shoot things. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. We have uh, the touch engine running just here. Uh, you can see the banana that we saw just a few seconds ago uh, in the talks files uh, in, um, in a touch designer. Um, so by shooting at that on off button, I just uh, loaded in the background as a, as a sub process uh, touch engine. And um, around that box, I have two arrows, and those two arrows are going to um, affect a parameter at the top uh, of the tox component. That parameter is called blend. Uh -huh. and and when I shoot, when I shoot, I'm updating the parameter and you can see live uh, the texture being affected as well with the blending. And if I keep going, <laughs> look what I found. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and no, Greg, uh, it's not the only way to start it, uh, to, to shoot at it. Uh, the users will be able to start uh, an engine on startup of the project if they want. It's really up to them. Uh, you can uh, start it in many, many ways, uh, or like with triggers on the floor, uh, like really whatever you want. You can start them from blueprints. So it's really uh, entirely up to the user. And here, in that case, I'm going to shoot again, and it's going to unload the engine. So if we go, uh, I'm going to leave a uh, play mode here. And if we look at this example, the way the project is made, um, I have uh, several blueprints, one blueprint per example. And here, if I look at that blueprint um, on the side, we can scroll down in the um, in the details panel here, and we can see there is a touch engine component. Okay. Yeah. So on that touch engine component, uh, we have a few features. Uh, we can specify uh, the path to the tox file uh, we are loading, and an interesting uh, twist is that you can drop um, a Windows link next to, to your tox files uh, that will specify which engine version you are using. So you have, you know, various touch designer installs on your system. You can specify, oh, I'm going to open my tox file with this engine version, and it will do it for you in the background. Um, then you can decide on your cook mode. So it's really things that uh, are already present on the engine comp from within touch designer. Uh, so you can, you know, just decide to run it independently, synchronized, delayed, synchronized. I will just say, go look on the wiki uh, if you want to have details on those, and they also they will also be um, explained uh, in the documentation of the Unreal plugin. Uh, you can specify the frame rates at which it's running. Uh, and you can also say that you want it to load uh, at uh, really when you start playing. Uh, so 
we are going back to Greg's question earlier in the chat. Um, and here, the really the interesting bit is that uh, all your parameters are exposed uh, on the um, on in the details panel here. Okay, so if we go back to Touch Designer, we can see there is a blend parameter, and we have two inputs. Uh, each input there is one that is named top text A, a and top text B. Um, and if we go in Unreal, we can see the parameter blend, and we can also see top text A and top text B. Okay. Okay. Here, um, the blend parameter is an input, and it's um, it's if you go on top of it, there is a little tooltip that say P slash blend. So it really reminds you it's a parameter, and um, for inputs it's I slash, and for outputs it's O slash. Okay, so all those you can then use them and access them in your blueprints. So if we dive into the blueprint, here we have the blueprint, and we have um, here what. Uh, represent our touch engine component. And here. Um, hey, Michelle, question. Is it possible to use 8-bit images? Yeah, bigger than 8-bit. Oh, sorry, bigger than 8-bit. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, there, Tim. There is a limitation um, uh, based with uh, what, uh, what format and what type of compressed uh, texture Unreal uh, can take. Um, and I can't remember the whole list uh, because uh, there is a huge list of different formats and types that are really specific to game engines. Um, but uh, we will document that when we release the plugin with all the details on that. Um, so yeah, here, get uh, touch engine output. So that's really all you will be able to access the output from uh, the engine uh, that is running. Uh, so here in all case, uh, it's a top output named uh, top blended texture. That's what we see on screen. And then you can use that texture in your blueprint. Okay. Um, question came here from um, A is that, is there any license um, is that available for non-commercial, like you just... Uh... So the plugin will be um, open source in GitHub, but it will be uh, working only with paid licenses. So uh, educa education, uh, commercial license, pro license. And another question was if um, this works in only in blueprints or can you also get access to it via C++? I guess in Unreal you could code your way around blueprints or something like this. I'm not sure about that. Um, yes, that's that's a good question. Um, I uh, right now our focus is really on the blueprint integration, but uh, it should be made possible uh, to access also all those uh, from uh, uh, vanilla um, Unreal C++. Okay. So yeah, that's good. Super cool works. Cool guys. Thank you, Michelle. Merci beaucoup. Should we uh, should we come back to the uh, um, all together screen? Back. Except right. Luca, we lost your camera. Yeah, um, you can't you can't get it back. It's uh, we can't see you. Yeah. yeah, we can we can hear you, but we can't see you. Maybe you can take my screen. Oh, so, we can't see you at all. It's okay. It's okay. We know you're there. We know you're there. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> can you make a little question about the um, this amazing uh, link with uh, Unreal? That's like uh, maybe in the future a way that we can actually um, get the data from the shared memory of Touch Designer. For example, you make an instance with balls and you see these balls uh, in... Uh, 
uh, Unreal and then texture those balls with the amazing texture of Unreal. That would be like bananas. Banana. <laughs> 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 Uh, there's a question here, which is, uh, will it be possible to share SOP data with Unreal Engine? Yeah, that was my maybe complicated no, question. No, no, no SOP data at the moment. Um, it's uh, it's an imitation of the engine app and the touch engine, uh, but uh, to be discussed in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So? Also, oh, maybe ha having a tox into Unreal Engine and control some parameters of them from a touch designer would be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, using two patches at the same time, but with the, with the power of the Unreal Render. Right, because you have access, like in that, in those TOX files, you could run, you could have your Artnet set up, or you could have your MIDI set up even, you could yeah. um, play back movies, whatever you want to do in those, uh, whatever you can output then as well, um, can go into uh, in real, except subs and panels, but no. <clears throat> Well, that was quite the jam-packed two hours plus. Yeah. Yeah. I could still go on for 20 minutes if you want. I have a few <laughs> other examples. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and if anybody needs to refer to this again, all the in-session videos are on our YouTube channel. And so it's all of this is, is still is, is going to be there for later access. I had one quick announcement that uh, I'm just going to put this in the chat on um, next Saturday. So that would be uh, Saturday the 12th of June. Um, for those of you who don't know, Billy and uh, Shep has been um, hosting these meetups at Music Hackspace uh, virtually online, and they're absolutely fantastic. We've been we've been going to them all. So there's three presenters, and then um, there's breakout rooms, and you can go into the breakout rooms and demo things and talk to your friends, and uh, I highly recommend it. So next Saturday. June 12th, yeah. June 12th. Well, um, thanks so much, everybody. Well, yeah, thanks a thank lot. Thank you guys so much. For, That's been you guys. Yeah. 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 I'll watch again this video a couple of times now and <laughs> start from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a bit illuminating, illuminating. Uh, the, um, the link patch I show it's in the description. Got it and get in contact for uh, Grow Together. Correct, yes. The link to drag on is in the description of the video. Yeah. Um, also, soon we will make a GitHub with all the modules also. So. Excellent. Perfect. Nice. Yeah. We can so always update going. the video of this. Um, stay, stay in the call. I think we're just going to say goodbye to the audience out there. And Aww. then um, we can just uh, say goodbye, not so in public. <laughs> <laughs> all the cheers, all the pizza. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody, for okay, watching. Guys, thanks for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> See bye -bye. you the following Saturday. Bye.